Hello! This is a tutorial on using DAS 3D and Blender to create some quick posing and lighting reference. Uh, so I'm starting off here in DAS 3D, and if you go up here in the top left, you should have this menu with all of your uh, files and materials and stuff. And it should come, if you look in this figures section, preloaded with these male and female Genesis figures. Uh, they're fine, so you can go ahead and just use those to start with. Uh, so once you have your figure loaded, you'll notice here on this little tab on the side of the list actually says Smart Content. So the menu on the left will actually change a little bit depending on what you have selected. And if we choose this figure, you can see uh, it actually switches and gives us an option for poses over here. Uh, there's not very many that it starts out with, but it can be a useful starting point if you don't want to just be staring at the the A pose and try and figure out the whole thing by hand. So if you're doing something with like contrapposto, then you could use like a basic pose like that. And yeah, it's fine. And then you can tweak it to your liking. Uh, so it's pretty easy to pose things in DAS. There's two main ways you can do it, either by just you see when you mouse over an individual part of the body, it kind of lights up. And if you click and hold, you can actually just drag that body part around a little bit. So, and the nice thing about this is it will influence the parts around it. So if I grab the foot, I can actually move the whole leg. And uh, to me, it's a pretty natural way of getting your posing. Um, it does change based on the camera angle. So like if I want to swing this forearm towards us, so it's pointing like the way her torso is facing, I can't really do that from this camera angle. But if I rotate to the side, then I can like grab the hand and kind of pull it that way. And then the other way you can pose is if you just simply click on any given limb, it'll give you this little uh, gimbal tool here. And you'll find there are three different axes rings that you can click on. So you can rotate like the blue one or the green one or the red one, or if you kind of hover in the middle, it'll give you this yellow circle, and that's just kind of a freeform rotate. And this will not affect any surrounding limbs. So like if I grab the hand and I rotate it, I can move the hand and it won't mess with the forearm or the upper arm or anything. Whereas if I just click and drag, you can see it kind of pushes everything around. Uh, and for moving the camera, all the your tools are up here in the top right. You can click this little cube to rotate around, the little magnifying glass to zoom in or use your scroll wheel, and then the little panning icon to move around. Uh, you don't really need to worry about your camera here except for posing, because we're gonna set up a camera in Blender. Once you have your figures posed the way you want, and you can do as many as you want, you just want to go up to File, Export, and be sure you have a Wavefront Object or .obj selected, and just hit Save. And you may also want to save your DAS file itself in case you want to come back later and tweak these poses, because uh, it's really hard to change the poses themselves once you get it into Blender. So I'll go ahead and do that too, and just save my DAS file. All right, so we've exported our DAS figures as OBJ files, and now we're hopping over to Blender. Um, before we get started, a couple quick controls in Blender. So if you press middle mouse button, you can rotate around, shift middle mouse button will let you pan, and scroll wheel lets you zoom. So that's kind of how you navigate your uh, window. Then you can move things, by pressing G, uh, you have to click on them and then hit G and move them around. If you want to lock them to an axis, you can do that. So if I hit X, it will be locked to the X axis. If I hit Y, it's locked to the Y axis. And if I hit Z, it's locked to the Z axis. Uh, you can also exclude an axis, which I find handy. Uh, if you press, so G to move, and then if you press Shift, and the axes you don't want to move on. So if I do Shift Z, 
it will exclude the up and down axis, and I can only move this cube uh, left and right and forward and backwards. So if it's on a ground plane and I don't want to move it up and down at all, that can be really helpful for that. So I'm going to delete this. I'll just hit X to delete. And then I can go to File, Import, Wavefront OBJ file. And then if you navigate to your folder, you can just double click to import your DAS model. Cool. So now we have our figures loaded into Blender. First thing I usually do is scale them up as DAS imports figures rather small. And we want them to be about like actually six feet within the program because the lighting will be more realistic that way. Uh, we'll get to setting up lights in a minute. I do want to create a ground plane. So if you hit Shift A, that gives you your add menu. And if you go to mesh, there's a bunch of 3D forms you can add. And this is useful for throwing a quick perspective reference in the background too. So I can hit uh, plane to make that. And if I hit S to scale, I can just scale it up. And now I have a nice little ground floor. Um, and I'm gonna wanna actually move the figures down so they're kind of touching it. And now I'll get some nice reflected light from my light source. Uh, so before we get into lights, let's go ahead and set up our camera. There should be a camera already in the scene. It looks like this. If there's not one, you can do Shift A and add a camera. Easy peasy. So to go to your camera view, you can hit zero on your numpad, and this will show you what the camera sees, which is very handy. One thing you'll want to be sure to do is either click this arrow in the top right or hit N. And if you have the view tab selected here, be sure camera to view is selected. And what this does is move the camera object itself whenever you move your view within the viewport. So if I turn this off and I rotate using the middle mouse button, you can see I exit the camera view and the camera stays where it is. But if I check this camera to view and I rotate with the middle mouse button, you can see the camera itself is rotating around my figures. Uh, and I find this is the easiest way to position a camera because I can just use my normal navigation and put it where I want. Another thing we might want to do with our camera is change the field of view. A lot of our illustrations use a much wider angle lens. Uh, so you have to be sure you have the camera selected, either in the list or by clicking the frame. And then here in our properties list on the bottom right, there should be this little green camera icon. And if you click on that in the lens section, you will find focal length. And it's by default set to 50 millimeters. Um, if you want a wide angle lens, you can do something between like 20 and 35. So let's just see. And the nice thing about being in the camera view itself is we can instantly see the effect of that. So if we switch from 50 to 25, we get a much bigger view of the frame, and then we have to zoom back in. So that's working pretty well. Um, I do feel like I might want to move these figures relative to each other. so. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Just hit zero on my numpad to get out of camera view. If I click these figures, I can move them around just like I was doing before, um, but they are moving together because they are not separate models. They're just the one clump exported from DAS. Uh, we can split them up. So the way we do that is simply click on the models so you have this nice orange outline on them, and then hit tab to go to edit mode, and this will let you edit the actual geometry. It should have everything selected, which is good. If you deselect it accidentally, you can just hit A for like select all and it'll bring it back up again. And then you can hit P and what this will do is separate any of the geometry that's not connected to each other. So if you click this by loose parts, it will do exactly that. And you'll notice we now have a ton more bits of geometry in our <laughs> collection list over here. So I'm going to hit tab again, and I've now exited edit mode, and I'm in object mode. And I'm just going to click, shift click, H to hide. And you can see all that's left is the, <laughs> like the teeth and the eyeballs. 
So I'm just going to box drag those and X delete. And now we only have two meshes in our collection list and I can hit Alt H to unhide them. So now our models are separated, which is kind of nice. And I might go into my camera view and play around a little bit with our positioning. Cool, uh, so setting up lights. So if you look in the top right of this little viewport here, you'll notice these four circles. Uh, if you click on the second from right, which is viewport shading, we will be able to get into EV, which is like a game engine render. You can also just hit Z and it will let you switch between the different modes. Uh, material preview is the one we want. So if I just switch to that, you'll see we can now get the materials of our figures uh, the way we want them. And the eyeballs are gone, which is terrifying, but it's fine because it's just reference. And then what we want to do is click this drop down in the top right, turn on scene lights and scene world. And what this does, it is it will actually uh, use the lights that we have in the scene. So this gives us a really accurate view of how it's going to render and we can set up our lights the way we want them. So if I go to my camera view, I can click on my light here. And by the way, if you don't have a light, uh, you can just hit Shift A, and under light, there's point, sun, spot, and area. I usually use point lights, but you can use whatever works for you. So I'm going to go to my camera view because I want to see how the light is actually going to look from my render. And so you can see here, everything's in shadow, which isn't really what I want. So I'm going to hit G to move and Shift Z again. So I'm only moving it left, right, forward, and back. And I'm just going to kind of scooch this light around until I get some shadow shapes that look pretty nice. And that, that should work fine for now. So I have, this is my one key light, and maybe I want to set up another kind of secondary light. So let's say I'll create another point light, and I'll actually put it kind of behind them and you'll see when we have this light selected over here on the right side, just like we had our camera properties, now we have this little green icon that's a light bulb. And this is where we can change our light settings. So if we want our key light, we'll just select that one, this one up here. We could maybe click on this color and let's say we want that to be a colder light and you can change the wattage too, which is basically how bright it is. So if I set this to 50, it's barely affecting the figures. If I set it to 2500, it's a little blown out and overexposed probably. So you can play with those settings until they're the way you want. And the secondary light, I'm thinking maybe we'll like throw a little orange in there. Also important to note is the radius. So you see right now it's 0.25 feet. If I set this to like 50 feet, our shadows are gonna be much softer when they render because the light is larger. So if it's a larger light, it needs more power to be visible, but it gives you a softer effect. So if I do that with my key light, change that to 25 feet, very sharp shadows versus very soft shadows. And that's just by changing the radius of my key light. So you can get either like a nice strong daylight or soft ambient cloudiness. Um, in this case, I'll probably keep the key light maybe a little softer and then have the secondary light be uh, really soft. Yeah, that works pretty well. Uh, so at that point, we're pretty much good to go. Um, one other thing you might wanna do is if you come here and click on render properties and film you can turn on this transparent checkbox and basically what that does is um, anything in your camera view that's not actual geometry so uh, the floor and the figures will be rendered but all this gray space behind them will be transparent so it, you don't have to bother cutting the figures out when you want to import them into your uh, psd so I always like having that transparent box checked. 
And then the only other thing you want to do is make sure your render engine is set to cycles. Uh, you probably want it set to GPU. Um, if you have a good graphics card, it'll be faster. If you don't have a good graphics card, you can set it to CPU. And then all you have to do is hit F12. And you can see we have the standard transparency checkerboard thing going on back here. So you can tell that'll be transparent when you save it out. Uh, and all you have to do there is go to image and save or save as or do alt shift s uh, whatever you want uh, one other thing you can actually do is if you click this second tab which is the output properties you can change the resolution of your render both like the ratio and the the scale so if we wanted this to be like a taller image we could set our x value to 900 whereas if we wanted it to be we wanted to keep this ratio, but we wanted it higher resolution. We could set it to like 8,000 by 4,500, and it's still 16 by nine. It's the exact same render and framing. It's just gonna take longer to render, but give you a more high resolution output. And the last thing I will look into real quick is materials. If you're doing something funky and don't necessarily want them to be fleshy, all you have to do is click on the figure. And if you look over on the right here, I'm gonna exit camera view. This little orb with the checkerboard pattern on it, these are all the materials that are applied to the figure. And these should be applied automatically from Daz. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of these by hitting the little minus sign and just scroll through the list until they're gone. Cool. So now we have just like a plain statuesque figure. And then if you want to make your own materials, that is super easy too. All you have to do is, if there's none here, you can just hit this new button and it'll give you a new material. And there's a bunch of settings in here. Uh, very few of them do you actually need if you're just doing quick illustration reference. Uh, so let's say I want this girl to be made out of either like charcoal or obsidian. So I might select kind of a grayish blue, drag my value way down, my saturation back even further. And then pretty much the only property we care about is roughness. So if we turn the roughness up, then the figure becomes much less specular. If we turn the roughness down, the figure becomes much more shiny. Uh, we're getting some really cool highlights and reflections that could be really useful and hard to come up with on your own. But if we want something more matte, we can just turn the roughness uh, way up. The other one that I tend to use sometimes is subsurface. I usually keep it at pretty low values, but if I set it to like 15 and set the subsurface color to something kind of warm like that, we get this really nice voluminous subsurface scattering effect. And you can do this to the normal fleshy Daz figures too. Just bear in mind, you have to put it on pretty much every skin material. So it does take a good like five or six minutes. And that's pretty much it. You can make as many figures as you want in Daz and import them into the same scene. Uh, you know, you could create different light sources if we decided we want some kind of crazy rim light. So we could create a point and make it like really intense, but only behind them. And you can see this is giving us like some really nice shapes and rim light especially. It's kind of hard to invent how those shapes are gonna look. Uh, and also don't ignore your environment too. Like if we create a new material for this floor and just make it really dark, it's not gonna uh, bounce nearly as much light into the figures. So if I re-render that, you can see we actually get a completely different scene where before the figures were very illuminated because there was this bright white floor bouncing light back up at them. And now we just have this really dark floor, so there's not really much reflected light. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will try to figure it out. Cheers.